As soon as her folks brought her home from the church social, Rowan Jarvis scurried up the stairs to her room. She placed a red spotted card from Thaddeus Flynn in her ebony box on the table by her bed and looked at the big calendar on the wall. The following day, Sunday, was circled in red right across the number Rowan had pointed or had printed a name in big block letters. Henry Piper. Henry's coming, she sighed to herself. She heard the back door slam downstairs as her paw went out to the bar to see the livestock. There was a buzz of voices in the kitchen. Sam Waxman, the hired boy, was due to clean up the cellar, and Mrs. Jarvis wanted to be sure he did the job right. Rowan was annoyed. She wanted to talk to her mother alone, not with Sam around. She'd put the thing off as long as she could if, she, if the idea she had in mind was going to work out. She had to see Mama right now. T tomorrow would be too late. She went downstairs, resisting the urge to slide down the banister. That was for children. At 15, one had to be more dignified. Her mother and Sam were seated at the kitchen table. Mrs. Jarvis mumbled something to Sam. Yes, am he replied, In his thick shook of red hair bobbed around as he nodded his head. Tall and gnarly, Sam seemed to be mostly arms and legs stuck somewhere onto the long stick of a body, but he could do mama's work. He could do a man's work around the farm. He took his meals with the Jarvises and lived in a little room out in the barn. Roman wasn't at all fond of Sam. Sam was 17 and had a way of speaking his mind that she found annoying and sometimes downright rude. Sam was just a bumpkin, so unlike Henry Piper. Mama, she said softly. Yes, Rowan, her mother said. What is it? Sam got to his feet. I'd best be going out and help Mr. Jarvis in the barn, he said, so you can t talk alone. Sam Waxman, you stay put, replied Mrs. Jarvis firmly. Clifton said he would do without you for two days while you clean the cellar, and I mean to have it done right this time. Anything Rowan's got to tell me won't take long. Now wait. What is it, girl? Well, I, she began. Mama, Henry Piper will be coming into town tomorrow. Mrs. Jarvis sighed deeply. I suppose so, she said. Twice a year, just like clockwork, the new Neverfull Farm implement company sends that Henry Piper around with his catalogs and your father ends up with more cedars and cultivators and hay forks that I than he can use around here in months of a Sundays. Mother and mother said Rowan Henry would never sell anybody any something they didn't need. No. Well you just watch him at his peddling sometimes flirting with the farm wives and grown daughters and chucking the babies under this, tucking the babies under their chins, talking about far places he's been and to the things he's seen and all the sell, his tools and machinery. I tell you, Henry Par Piper could charm the socks off of a snake. Well, he'll only be here for three days and I give thanks for that blessing. Mama, don't talk so. Henry's just as sophisticated and whirly that it takes a very special kind of person to appreciate him. Mrs. Jarvis scowled at her daughter. Rowan, you sound almost like you think you're in love with that boy. You're far too young to even be considering such nonsense. I'm 15, Mama. I'm only seven more months. I'll be 16, and I, I, oh, get on with it, Rowan. What was it you wanted to ask me? Well, you know, Henry always stays at Miss Valerie's rooming house when he's in town. Yes. Where else would he put up? I, I was wondering whether he might stay here this time. Sam let out a snort that a horse could have been proud of. Then he started chuckling behind his hand. Sam Waxman, you stop that this instant. Rowan put her hands on her hips and her eyes glittered angrily. Rowan, you have got a thing for that fellow, ain't you? said Sam. No, I don't. Yes, you do. Remember Sunday dinner last fall when he came by? 
Maybe you didn't think I noticed the two of you holding hands under the tablecloth and then things he was telling you. Sam tried to copy Henry Piper's manners of speaking. Oh, St. Louis and Boston are fun, he mimicked. But New York City, now there's a place where everything is going to go on at once. Sam took Rowan's hand. Rowan, he crooned in a mocking whisper, will walk the streets at three in the morning. And it will be just like noon. The lights all over the place. Just imagine you in your best dress sashaying down the Broadway on my arm. The two of us looked up at the building five times as tall as the highest pine in Coven Tree. Then eating in fine restaurants where we'll be serving any kind of food you can imagine. Oh, Rowan, my dear one. Sam kissed Rowan's hand with a loud smack. She jerked her hand away quickly. The words had sounded so lovely when Henry had said them. And here was Sam making fun of the whole thing. Sam Waxman, you stop it at once. She snapped. I'll have no more of this. And I'll have no more to talk of Henry Piper's being in this house for three days making calf eyes at you, Rowan, said her mother. With all the walking around in the city at night, how does Henry manage to get any sleep, Sam went on. If you say one more word, Sam, I'll have done you both of, have done the both of you, ordered Mrs. Jarvis. Henry's not staying here, and that's a flat. Rowan flounced out of the kitchen and back upstairs to her own room. It just wasn't fair. She was, she thought, pleading herself into her bed. Bad enough, Henry's coming to Coventry only twice a year. The least Mama and Daddy could do was let him stay here when she could see him as often as she liked. Rowan lay on her stomach, imagining how it grand it would be if Henry settled in Coventry. Then she could see him every day. She closed her eyes and pictured him, all fine and neat, in his striped suit with his black hair slicked down. Then the picture changed. It wasn't Henry she saw in her mind anymore. It was Thaddeus Blinn. I can give you whatever you ask for, Blinn's sign had said. Rowan knew what she wanted. What do you guys think she wants? I want you to make a prediction of you, what you think she might do. She wanted to see Henry a lot more often than a few days twice a year. She opened her eyes. There, just inches from her face on the bedside table, was the ebony box. She opened it and took out a red spotted card. Then she got up, went to the closet, and put the card in her pocket of her best dress. We will see what we will see, she said to herself as soon as Henry gets here. The next day after church, Rowan was out in front of the gathering some flowers when she heard a shout from the road. Hello, the Jarvises. Is anyone about? Henry Piper, with a glad little cry, Rowan ran towards the gate, calling his name. Oh, I'm so glad you've come, she said. I couldn't stay away, lovely lady, replied Henry with a deep bow. I came first thing. As soon as I got off the train, Rowan thought her mu she might faint from the pure joy. Then she heard a voice behind her. You came here first thing, huh? Then how come you ain't got no bags with you except that little case with your catalogs and order slips. <clears throat> nah, you got yourself fixed in the blitz and finest. Got all freshened up, your hair's still wet. Oh, that Sam, Rowan could have killed him. Sam Waxman, ain't you got anything better to do than just seeing gawking while two old friends get reacquainted? Yep, I reckon I do. Sam looked Henry up and down. It won't do for me to stand here talking. That's Henry's department, talking. And off he walked towards the barn. Never mind, Sam, Rowan said sweetly. You come inside, Henry. Perhaps you can stay for dinner. Perhaps I can, my dear. I have a whole new line of machinery I want to talk to your father about. Rowan pout pouted prettily. And later, maybe you and I can have a few words together alone. When Henry said alone, the way Rowan's innards felt like they were filled with butterflies. Henry stayed the whole day. He spent most of the afternoon in the front parlor with Mr. Jarvis, talking about machinery. 
It wasn't until that evening that Rowan got Henry to herself. They sat on the big black port, the big back porch, watching the last of the sunset. Rowan was of two minds about Henry. She was, of course, delighted to have him there, but she was already thinking ahead to the time of two days hence when he'd be leaving Coventry. After tomorrow, I have some time off from school, she said hopefully, and on Tuesday, Savannah Huskins is giving a party. I thought perhaps you could, I mean, we could, but Henry just laughed. Silly goose, he replied, tweaking her nose. What would the never fail farming implement company think if they found their best salesman going off to parties instead of tending to business? Rowan sighed. She was sure Henry liked her. It only, if only he'd come right out and say so. Almost dark, Henry said. I best be getting back to Miss Mitz Ballatine's. Can't you stay just a little longer, Rowan pleaded. I expect your pa would like you inside and me gone. I'll just cut across the backyard until tomorrow, Rowan. And without waiting for a reply, he stepped off the porch. Two more days and then Henry'd be gone, again for another six months. Rowan couldn't bear the thought of it. From the pocket of her back best dress, she took out the card she'd placed there yesterday. She pressed her thumb firmly against the red spot and made her wish. I wish, I wish Henry Piper would put down roots here in Coventry and never leave again. I want you to think about what it means to put down roots. What do you think she means by that? And remember, Boleyn told them that their wish would be exactly as they wished it. So I wonder how this is going to turn out for them. The spot on the card suddenly felt warm against her thumb. Henry had disappeared into the darkness. In the still of the night air, Rowan heard a rustling sound. It was accompanied by grunts and groans and heavy breathing. And it seemed to be coming from the thick grove of trees back where the lawn ended and the fields began. At first, Rowan thought it might be some weird or wild critter who'd gotten tangled with them tree limbs. But then she heard the voice. It was a little more than a whisper. Corn sarn it. Rowan, come help me. Rowan seized the lantern from the porch, lit it, and held it in front of her as she crossed the backyard into the grove of trees. They grew in a circle, and their tangled branches made it hard for her to enter. Finally, she forced her way in the inn and held the lantern high. There stood Henry Piper, mumbling anger words, but he was bent over, and at first Rowan thought he was pulling up his sock. Then she saw it was his ankle itself he was yanking up on. Henry, Rowan gasped, what are you doing lurking about here? I thought you'd be halfway back to Mitz by now. Keep your voice low, Rowan. I, I don't want anybody else come out here and find me in this fix. Fix? What fix, Henry? It's my feet. They seem to be stuck to the ground, and I can't move them, no matter how hard I try. Oh, my. Think about what could possibly be wrong with his feet. Henry, are you spoofing me? But Henry didn't play. Henry wasn't playing any jokes. He stood at the center of the circle of trees, with both feet planted firmly together on the earth. From the look on his face, Rowan could see he was playing deep down scared. I'm stuck, I tell you, he said in a quivering voice. It's like I'm glued to the earth. You better get me glued real quick, Rowan Jarvis. Rowan knelt and looked carefully at Henry's feet and ankles. They didn't seem to be caught by any traps. She gasped at his right leg and yanked up hard, but nothing. I'll get daddy, she said. Maybe he, you'll do nothing of the kind, Henry replied. If words of this gets out, I'll be a laughing stock in this whole country. I'll be, I'll be finishing as a salesman. I'll be finished as a salesman. You just keep your mouth shut and get me loose. Try wrapping your arms around me and lifting. Rowan got behind Henry and threw her arms around him. For months, she yearned to have her arms around Henry Piper, but not when something like this was happening. She heaved upward for all the good it did. 
she might as well have been trying to haul a full-grown tree out of the ground. It, it isn't working, Henry. Then do something else, he ordered. Rowan, it was Mrs. Jarvis calling from the back porch. Yes, Daddy. Are you out there with Henry Piper? That young Jack Naps never did say goodbye. Rowan was about to say yes when she saw Henry scowling at her. No, Daddy, she called back. I'm alone. I'll be right in. Don't you dare let your father on your father that I am out here, Henry whispered through the clenched teeth. I never felt so foolish in my life. I won't tell, but I must go inside. Can I do something to make you more comfortable, Henry? I'm chilly. I need a coat or something. I'll just go in the house and... No, your pop will get to wondering. Get something from the barn. The only thing Rowan could find was an old horse blanket. She wrapped it around Henry. That should keep you warm, she said. Tomorrow, I'll be out first thing to bring you breakfast. Or maybe get you free in the meantime. Henry sniffed at the blanket and wrinkled his nose. Phew, he exclaimed. This old thing stinks of heady and horse sweat. Haven't you got anything cleaner? Rowan glared at him. You said you didn't want me to go in the house, Henry. Then I suppose it'll have to do. Rowan ran off towards the house while Henry clutched the smelly blanket close to him and tried to stop the chattering of his teeth. Rowan didn't sleep much that night. She was too jittery and upset and a little scared by what had happened. Henry Piper stuck to the ground had been ever... Had ever there been such a thing before? By morning, she was so loggy and puffy-eyed that her mother wondered if she was sick. No, ma'am, just a bit tired. As soon as she could, Rowan snuck out to the grove of trees with a donut from the breakfast table. Henry stood there shivering in the blanket. I brought you this, Henry, said Rowan. A donut, he sneered. If it wasn't for coming to see you, I'd be down at the mitts right now, eating ham and eggs. All you've got is an old donut. Well, I don't need it. You've got to eat, Henry. I feel like I've been eating all night. Only the food has come up from my feet instead of down from my mouth. What in tarnation has happened to me, Rowan? Henry, I really think I should tell you some, tell somebody. You just keep that mouth of yours shut, young lady. Henry Piper, you never in your life talked to me like that before, said Rowan. But, well, don't start worrying. We'll get it you free. Let me find something to sit on. I've got everything w right to worry, Henry replied. As for sitting, I can't do it. My knees won't bend. I'm stiff from the waist down. Never mind a chair. Just get rid of this smelly blanket. All right, Henry. But then I have to go to school. I'll come back as soon as I can. You'd better, said Henry sternly. I'm stuck on your property, so you have to look after me until I get loose. Rowan walked out of the grove of trees. Suddenly, she turned and stuck out her tongue at the spot where Henry was standing. The school days passed almost like a dream or a nightmare. Afterwards, Rowan ran all of the way home, hoping to slip in the back door without anybody seeing her. But Mama was in the kitchen. Sit down, Rowan, said Mrs. Jarvis. I want to talk to you. Rowan put her hand to her lips. Had Mama discovered? Did you pass the grade school on your way home? Mama asked. Rowan shook her head. I took a shortcut. Why? Clara First School came by today earlier and said sh she and said Polly Kemp was croaking like a frog in school. I thought you might have heard. Oh, Mama, you know Polly. She'd do anything to get attention. No, Clara said it was like Polly hadn't, couldn't help herself, as if Crokin had taken over the place of talking. Clara Friskel's an old gossip, gossip, Rowan began. Then she suddenly closed her mouth, and a little shiver ran up her spine. Excuse me, Mama, Rowan darted through the back door and out to her mother's sight. Polly Kemp acting strangely. Polly, who'd sat right next to her in Thaddeus Blunt's tent, what was that go what was going on? In the midst of the circle of trees, she found Henry just as she'd left him. No, not quite the same. I seem to be losing my voice too, he said in a harsh whisper. You've got to get me loose. But how, Henry? Maybe you can pry me free. Get the long branch there. 
Rowan got the branch. Now bring it over here, Rowan did as she was told. Can't you move any faster, Rowan? Henry wheezed. Now slide the end of it under my foot. No, you, Ninny, not the end. The other one. Rowan, stop being so infernally dumb. Could this be the same Henry Piper she thought she was so that was so marvelous only yesterday? I'm doing the best I can, she said. Well, your best isn't good enough. Now, get that piece of wood. Not the one Dad blast. Not that one. Dad blast it. That one. Stick it underneath the pole. Take it easy there. It feels like you're tickling my foot. But Rowan was too upset by all the orders. Henry was spouting at her to wonder how he could feel tickling right through the sole of his shoe. Now, push down on the pole, Henry went on. Push harder, you silly. Ow! What are you trying to do, cripple me? You told me to pry, Henry. I'm prying. I can't keep things straight when you are giving me all these orders at the same time. You're just like all the rest. Not enough sense to boil water. All the rest? What rest? Rowan wondered, but before she could ask, Henry was... Henry, she heard another voice behind her. Rowan, I thought I'd seen you here. In this, seen you here. What the dickens? Sam. With a guilty start, Rowan turned to face him. Sam scowled at Rowan. Have you and Henry been sneaking? No, it's not like that at all. Suddenly, it was important for Rowan, to Rowan that Sam understand what she and Henry were doing in the grove. Henry's feet got stuck to the ground somehow, and, yeah, I'll bet they did, muttered Sam. Well, I'll pry him loose in a hurry. Sam put his whole weight on the lever. Henry cried of pain, were oddly, muff were oddly muffled, as if they came from a distant valley. Hush up, Henry, said Sam. Don't you want to get loose or not? Finally, Sam had to give up. I guess you're right, Rowan, he said. Henry stuck fast. It's eerie. I never saw like this before. Do you folks know how this? How about this? No, and ain't gonna tell him either, said Henry. Don't you be giving me or orders, Henry, Sam said. Now, if we're going to get you loose, we have to see what's holding you down. Sam took out his jackknife and knelt by Henry's feet. Sam, you be careful, Henry said. It's scary enough to become stuck here. I don't want to be cut, too. Hmm, that's odd, said Sam. What's odd, asked Henry. Your shoes. Leather's all cracked. It looks for, like, the world, like, bark on the tree. And the bark goes clear up to your ankles. Well, I'll cut some loose. Sam thrust the nice knife blade under Henry's right shoe. Ah! Henry's scream wasn't very loud, sounding like it had a blanket wrapped about his head. But Rowan's gasp in alarm. You hurt me, Sam, Henry whispered. You cut my foot with your knife. Sam looked up. Henry, I swear I was digging way down below the sole of your shoe. And Sam, look at that, cried Rowan, pointing to the red stuff on the blade of your knife. It looks like blood. Blood? shrieked Henry as loud as he could. My blood? But how could? Sam began. Then he started digging below Henry's shoe with his fingers. It was slow going, but finally the earth beneath Henry's right heel had been scraped away. Look there, Rowan, said Sam. From the bottom of Henry's foot, of Henry's foot were growing roots. Rowan asked astonished. Roots, Sam replied. You mean Henry is rooted to the ground like a, a tree? It seems so. And if we cut those roots, I bet like stabbing a knife into Henry's body, he might even kill him. Don't do it then, moaned Henry. I don't want to die. But what could have caused Henry to go roots and, Rowan began. Then she started trembling and shaking all over as she finally understood the things she'd done to Henry Piper roots, Rowan had said the words before, just a short time ago, last night on the porch. She pressed her thumb onto the spot on the wish card and wished. 
wish that Henry Piper would put down roots here in Coventry and never leave again. Oh, Sam, Rowan cried as t tears filled her eyes. Oh, Sam. Okay, now that is the end for today. Um, make sure that you do your summary in Canvas as well and answer those questions in Canvas.